Good afternoon. Thanks for the chance to be with you today. Whether we meet virtually or in person, I appreciate the opportunity to talk to those who represent the economic engine that fuels our state's economy, creates jobs, contributes to our tax base, and partners with us to build communities. This may not be how we thought we would celebrate the Chamber's 26th legislative day, but the commitment to continuing this tradition speaks volumes about the resilience of Kentucky's business community. Throughout this pandemic, you have found ways to meet the needs in the marketplace and place an even greater emphasis on employee and customer safety. From the very first days of the pandemic, when the manufacturers quickly retooled their lines to make personal protective equipment and the distillers began making hand sanitizer, Kentucky's business community has been part of the solution. We are ready to be part of the solution as well. And the House Majority Caucus has a proven record of our commitment to making Kentucky the best place to live, work, and build a business. Since we were given the House majority by voters in 2017, the House moved forward a pro-jobs, pro-worker, and pro-family agenda aimed at job creation and improving the quality of life for all Kentuckians. That work was paying huge dividends when the first case of COVID-19 was diagnosed last March. We had record investment in Kentucky businesses, over $20 billion in three-year period. We had one of the lowest unemployment rates in our state's history. Just one year ago, there were more than 130,000 job openings waiting to be filled. This is what we can do when we adopt thoughtful, well-considered policies that foster economic success. While the pandemic may have shifted our short-term focus, we remain committed to our long-term mission. Of course, the remainder of this session will be dominated by crafting a one-year budget. As you know, this is a big lift and a good year, and it's even a more difficult process in the midst of a global pandemic with tremendous uncertainty. While we received positive news from the consensus forecasting group in December, even they recognized how fragile those estimates were, and one of the members described it as throwing darts at a dartboard. While we are still working, the budget we passed this session will be a conservative spending plan that reflects our state's needs. Kentuckians expect us to act carefully because they know better than anyone that we are far from done with this pandemic. They understand that Kentucky continues to be a state with many needs and limited resources. We've made great strides, but we're in danger of falling behind in areas of critical importance. Kentucky has regained about two thirds of the jobs that we lost in the pandemic, but still have 90,000 fewer jobs than in March of last year. Workforce participation is down two percentage points. We already lagged in this area, and now we are at the very bottom. Capital investment went from $5.3 billion in 2019 to $1.5 billion in 2020. Kentucky dropped four spots in the national ranking of the best and worst places to do business. Ten years ago, this state chamber sounded an alarm, delivered in the pages of the very first leaky bucket report. That alarm warned of the toll that unfunded pension liabilities, the cost of incarceration, and Medicaid were taking on our budget. We've patched some of those leaks, but many have been exacerbated by the pandemic. Medicaid enrollment has increased almost 20%, with more than 255,000 new enrollees. Of course, the budget isn't the only thing that will be on our agenda between now and March 30th. We will continue to look at COVID relief measures, including liability protections for businesses, individuals, and organizations. No one acting in good faith, following safety guidelines, should face the danger of an unfounded lawsuit. As business people, you know it can cause tremendous harm to your bottom line and also your reputation. Majority Whip Chad McCoy and Representative Steve Sheldon have worked diligently on this issue, and House Bill 10 was among the first bills passed by the House in January. The Senate has filed Senate Bill 5, and we will continue to engage stakeholders to craft the very best possible policy. Also expect us to pass House Bill 183, legislation filed by Appropriations and Revenue Vice Chair Brandon Reed. This measure makes Kentucky eligible for an additional $1 billion in funding for Medicaid services. This bill will benefit hospitals across Kentucky at no additional cost to our state budget. While pension liability continues to plague the state, we are closer to taking the next step towards sustainability. Thanks to the work of Representative Ed Massey, we are poised to make changes to new higher benefits under the teacher's retirement system. Thanks to the work of Representative Ed Massey, we are poised to make changes to new higher benefits under the teacher's retirement plan. House Bill 258 will help fix the structural imbalance. Rep Massey has done an incredible job working with stakeholders, including all of the education groups. I think that everyone recognizes that we also need to continue the tax reform work that we began a few years ago. All evidence shows that our first steps were successful. Again, before the pandemic, we had incredible economic and revenue growth. But the worst time to do tax reform is when we need money, because raising money becomes the top priority, 
and ultimately the top priority of any tax reform has to be the policy that best positions Kentucky for prosperity and sustainable growth. After all, we really do want the people of Kentucky to work more for themselves and less for their government. We will also look for ways to continue reforming the regulatory process. I will not let this administration roll back the many advances that we have made. When the process is used properly, regulations are an important government function. However, in the words of a former governor, commerce should not have the bit while state government holds the reins. The passage of Senate Bill 2 is the next step in our commitment to ensuring that regulations are consistent, relevant, and effective. Public assistance reform, as we presented last year in House Bill 1, remains a top priority for us. State programs created to help people should never prevent them from entering the workplace. We must address benefit cliffs like child care, transportation, and health care. To put a new spin on an old saying, you can give a man a fish, you can also teach him to fish because he's going to have a whole lot more success learning if he isn't hungry. Before I conclude, I want to address the thousand pound gorilla in the room, our relationship with this governor. Last year, I stood before you and made a good faith offer to the leader of our executive branch. I pledge that while we may have significant philosophical differences, the House would work to find common ground. Governor Bashir made a similar promise, and we were finding a way to do that until things got tough. Months went by without a single conversation between the leaders of the executive and legislative branches. Can you imagine any company navigating a crisis without the board of directors and the chief executive officer speaking? To put it bluntly, I'm just as disappointed as you are. Instead of recognizing a co-equal branch of government's role, the governor has chosen to unilaterally make policy decisions and spend millions of federal dollars unchecked. And any challenge to his authority was deflected by claiming it was politically motivated. He may even do so today. Perhaps the governor sees disloyalty and dissent, but difficult conversations with people who don't always agree with you can actually lead to better results. And we are all here to make good long-term public policy. I am still hopeful that we can work together for the benefit of our state. With everything that divides us, we still stand under the same flag, displaying the motto, united we stand, divided we fall. And we still want the same things for our Commonwealth. We are all Kentuckians. Again, thank you for inviting me to join you.